Welcome back to the channel, I'm Tom Quigley bringing you the latest tips, tricks and techniques for your contemporary painting and drawing needs and welcome back to another video. The weather has changed, it's getting really warm this week so hopefully you've managed to enjoy it. This video is based on looking at a different unit of work. I don't know if you saw my video last uh, time, it was based on a maps unit. This one's based on a rural landscape unit. I'm going to be using it particularly with my own year 11s. And so I thought I might share it to see if it would be any beneficial use for you. Now, in this video, we'll be specifically looking at doing an artist response. And the artist that we're going to be looking at today goes by the name of David Tress. Now, this artist is a mixed media collage painted artist who layers up various different degrees of collage to create abstract landscapes. I'm conscious about all the materials people have at home and within that in mind, I've tried to adapt this task and make it as creative as possible with the most limited amount of materials. And the materials that I'm decided to go for in this one is basically collage material, so mixed papers. So you're going to be looking at magazine cuttings in particular because they are full of colours and textures and you can have a look at maybe home magazines, hair magazines, fashion or gardening. They'll all be coming useful today and hopefully you'll be able to look within those magazines and see potential how they can be used in this task. Now the methods that I'm going to be using today are for all abilities and the reason why I've done that is basically I want it to be accessible for all but also there is tips and tricks how some of those people can rise up uh, their game and reach those really high levels. Anyway, I've talked way too much and I'm going to get ready for the task and hopefully you are too. See you in a minute. So we're ready to start and the first thing that I'm going to do is just put myself down some guidelines so I can write the word artist response. This is just going to make it clear what this double page is about and also write the artist name underneath it. What I'll also do after I've written these letters, I'm just going to do some very simple letters. I'm not doing anything too fancy. It's just clear and easy to see. I'm going to do a one centimetre border around the double page just to help with that presentation. Now, while I do that, I'm going to discuss what materials you will need. You will need some tracing paper, some images. Now, if you've got any photographs, that would be even better. A fine liner and a pencil. Now, first of all, we're going to start off with the tracing paper. And what I'd like you to do is fold it in half and then open it back up again and then fold it down the middle. So you've got uh, four different sections. And then what you're going to do, you're going to get your images, whether they're off the internet or photographs that you've managed to take in yourself. Obviously, photographs that you're taking yourself are more personal and uh, highly regarded in a sketchbook, but if you can't get those, just get them off the internet. Now, what I'm going to choose and do today is pick elements of the landscape that I want to create one abstract landscape. And the first thing that I'm going to do is look at the top of the image, where the top of the mountains are, or hills, and the sky. And we're going to start off with the background. So here you'll see I'm just going around the edges of those hills and mountains and around the sky. And that is going to be the top of my image. So I'm going to be able to take that section from that particular one. I'm also going to take just the background bottom of those hills and also put that image. Now, the after one thing I'm going to do now is change the image. So I'm going to look at another image, take an element of that and then incorporate it into the sky and the hills from the last image. Now, not all of this is going to fit together. At the end of the day, it's an abstract landscape, so it's going to have elements of the landscape, meaning that you've looked at it, but conventionally, it's not going to look like one that you see every single day. So do not worry about it. Just have a go, and that's why you've got four opportunities, and each time you do it, you'll get better and better and better. So as you can see, I'm adding more to it now. I'm adding around the trees or maybe lakes or reservoirs. And it's always nice to have some leading lines into the distance. So if you've got maybe paths or it could be rivers or canals, uh, put that into consideration when you're doing your piece of work. Now, I'm just doing some very simple details, maybe the bottom of the trees, just to outline where they would be. Um, but nothing too much, to be honest. You might want to put the outline of some clouds if there was some really spectacular cloud designs in there. But you can keep it relatively simple. Now, this one, I'm actually tilted the image uh, landscape. So the one before was portrait view. This one's landscape. So have a play around with the composition of um, qualities of your work. Again, I'm just choosing which elements I'd like from my images. 
working out what I'd like. Having fences um, or um, gates in your artwork will also give your, your piece a little bit more geometrical lines because we've got really curved lines uh, with the hills and the fields, but you might want some really straight lines uh, from that also. Now I'm just going to do the last one now when we've got those four images. And the first thing that I'm going to do then is I need to sketch it out. So I've got my image and you can actually do a tracing of it if you wanted to. So you could put graph out on the back if you wanted to, or you could draw it freehand. So I've decided just to draw it freehand, those simple shapes, just drawing it lightly. And um, this is going to be just an underpinning for the collage. So I'm just carefully mapping those things out there. Again, if you don't do it exactly right, don't worry about it. No one's going to really know, to be honest. Um, at the end of the day, we're doing an abstract landscape. So we're removing it from being realistic and then turning it into your own version. So I managed to get that all in there. And the next thing that you'll need is some collage papers. Now, I've just been rooting through different magazines. Some things are nothing to do with landscape or the colours from landscapes. You can see there, I'm just picking out bits from perfumes. But then I've also managed to find some adverts that may have had some fields or skies in the background. So if you can do that, it's going to make it your life a little bit easier. Now, what I'm going to do is just kind of loosely measure up the sky. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, I'm just using the ruler just to tear that. You could use scissors if you wanted to, or you could tear it. Now, if you do tear it, you're going to get that lovely worn look, but if you cut it, it's going to be a little bit more harsh. So have a play around with both of them. You never know which one you might particularly like. Now, I would always suggest going from the back forwards as well. That way, then the collage lays over the top of. Now, on this one particularly, I missed out a couple of bits, so I had to peel it back and then put it back over the top of it, which wasn't the best things, but I managed to do it in the end. So I'm just putting some variety of different areas on there, um, working out what I think would look quite nice. Again, there might be some empty white spaces. It doesn't matter. You're just putting some forms and creating distance. So you can. it's instantly recognisable as a landscape, but not as a landscape as you know it. So as I keep on doing that one, as I say, I forgot to put that one in there. So I managed to peel it back and then stick it on. And this is the second one. Uh, this is a landscape one, a bit more of a panoramic. Again, to sketch out the basic lines and shapes. And then you can start building up your collage in the background there. As you can see, I'm using some quite subtle um, pastel tones in the background. This is just going to help with distance. So you might want to pick out some pinks and purples, um, which would complement the greens in the foreground. I'm just tearing out elements there. They're just trees. Um, and then also I'll put some... Um, this one was actually a, a, a canal that was going through the centre. Um, but I wish I probably didn't put that light blue on there. I wish it had a little bit more texture. But hey, this is just a sketchbook investigation. So I've learned from it for next time when I do a bigger version. So I've added to keep on putting some more on here. Um, I think I'm quite happy with that element. And this I decided to just do some drawing into it. I didn't think it was the most successful, to be honest. But you might have some ideas how you could maybe incorporate some drawings in there. This is just literally putting some leading lines, maybe some fields or the edges of trees. Um, just turning it for a collage into a drawing. It's always quite nice to do it in the negative space around the collage. Now, once I've done those two things, I thought to myself, well, I might as well fill out the, the empty space with a tonal drawing. Here, I just did some hatching, just working out where the darks and the lights are. And it also makes me more familiar with the shapes that I'm doing. So if I was to do this on a bigger version, I would have done it a few times. I'd be more confident and it always helps to do things more than once. Second thing that I decided to do was just a continuous line drawing. Now, this one's just a five minute. You could do a 10 minute, 15, half an hour, even an hour, and it'll get more complex as you go along. Now, I'm drawing this straight from the collage, but you could actually look at the real images themselves. And that would also help you become more familiar with the shapes and the forms within the landscape. Um, and again, I'm just doing the formations of the clouds there. And it's quite nice. It's quite enjoyable. It's carefree and you don't have to worry about it, even if you and go towards wrong. towards the end now, because as I say, they're all just out of things. And I decided to end. use a light wash of green watercolour in the background, as I thought it looked a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now, you don't have to do this. It's just an added on little extra if you wanted to. Now, the next stage, we're going to discuss analysing the artwork, what is very important and why we've done this. 
Now, if you look at David Tress's work, he does torn landscapes, and that's what we've tried to do. So how have we done it? So you want to explain that you use magazine cuttings, but how did you get there? Well, you used a method of combining landscapes together. So we used tracing paper to get the background, the middle ground, and the foreground. You also want to maybe talk about, for out of all your collages, which one was the most successful, and talk about what you've learned. You also want to keep on to those images and keep on to those pieces of tracing paper. You've worked hard on them, so make sure they don't go to waste and you stick them in your sketchbook. And finally, you just want to add notes, find out things that you want to bring forward and let the examiner know. Now, what I want to show you is the potential of this material. Now, here you'll see combinations of real images plus collages images. Here, we looked at maybe using the acrylic and also I think there's some gold on there and just a mixture of textures that make it look quite interesting. Now, the materials that you can do this is endless and I've also done maybe using Quink and also even the image transfers that I've done in a previous video, I've laid over the top of them there. Well, that's it, guys, for the Arts Response, looking at David Tress. Hopefully you found it interesting, hopefully you found it intriguing, and hopefully it's inspired you to crack open those art materials and have a go yourself. I know when I'm planning these videos, it's quite difficult to judge what kind of things you are after. So please get in the comments and let me know. Do you want to see a progression of this video, maybe using a different range of materials, such as acrylic, or maybe using emulsion to create some textualization within the work? Just let me know and then I can find out and get back to you and try and create that community on the channel. As always, guys, please share and like. Um, it's always appreciated. Until next time, guys. See you later. Bye.